Right guys, it's going to be 100k nightfall solo on the strange terrain. For those that just want to see the run, then skip to the time on the screen. For the rest of you, can show you my build and the modifiers and stuff. This video is just for people just to easily solo their 100k uh, pinnacle reward for the week. Uh, you don't need to do it on master, you can do it on legend. Most people are leveling up still, so they're not going to be nowhere near 1080, most people. That's why I'm showing people the legend difficulty. The modifiers that we have on this are fire pit. Champions Unstoppable and Anti-Barrier with equipment locked match game and this modifier buffs the boss so you just got to be wary of that we're doing the run on a hunter because I haven't played much hunter on videos lately um, any subclass will work on the hunter you can do top tree tether, bottom tree tether, any arc strider class will work anything you want on this build but I just wanted to do a gunslinger run we're using bottom tree with swarm grenade and marksman's dodge. We paired that with both bad juju and celestial nighthawk so we get that massive damage and get our super quite often because of this uh, exotic. We're using a 7 serif weapon for anti barrier um, rounds and arc shield so it's arc. We've got wendigo on as well for more arc shields and boss damage and damage to knights and stuff. As for our mods on our armor, so we had a couple of intellect mods on just to get our stat up for that because we want our super quite often. That's like most important with this. On our other mods we had concussive dampener on, unstoppable pulse rifle, so this works with bad juju uh, or any exotic pulse if you put it on your gauntlets like this. Of course we can't go in and go like this, right? For whatever reason, um, but it does work if you put it on like that. If you want to do it differently and you don't want to run double primary, you don't need to, that's fine. Just do it differently, just put Infernal Whip on. Um, and essentially, you can have that to stop Ogres. There's only two of them, yeah, so you can run an actual special weapon if you want to do that. Other perks we had on Enhanced SMG Loaders, uh, Hybrid Purposing, High Barrier, Raid Launcher Reserves and Scavenger Perks. With recuperation, enhanced ashes to assets, with hive armaments and a major resist mod. That was what we basically had on there. So with the run, so straight away we can summon our sparrow. We want to get to the first room um, without wasting time, since we've got 20 minutes to get max score. Then after 20 minutes, you've got your multiplier halves, and you start to lose points. So you want to be getting to the boss well before 20 minutes on a solo run. You don't want to be messing about. You don't want to be. You don't have to speed run it either, but you want to get to. You want to clear each room efficiently at least. With this first room, we're going to have two champions to deal with: one on a barrier knight and a ogre. You want to take out the knight before the ogre. If you try to deal with like both at the same time, uh, that's when you're going to get your wipes. So as soon as you see the knight, you want to. Be taking him down as sort of quickly as you can um, as if he backs up to the cliff area uh, he can actually do a shield he can side dodge behind cover and then do his shield which that's what you don't want then you have to push up and then you've got an ogre on you be sure as well to aim down sights before you approach the ogre as well just helps out if you don't one shield the uh, or one phase the ogre, just back up to that hill. And if he's finishable, do so. And fill up on any heavy with your nades. If you're not using hive mods, you can do this run. You just I probably wouldn't use the run that I'm using now. If you're doing it with hive mods, you do it with sort of Arx Rider. Arx Rider would be a way better class than this. Well, the only reason why I'm doing different weapons and all that stuff from different subclasses just to freshen it up for me this strike is old to me it's been out forever we've done runs with pvp weapons we've done it with last word we've done it with fawn we've done it we've done so many runs over the over the years with it it just gets you know old for me but i understand to other people it might not be old because it's people that have started the game at different points so i still want to do videos on them but i also want to make it you know, interesting for myself as well. So with this first room, we're going to have a bunch of snipers at the back and a couple of acolytes in front of us. You want to... I mean, I've got bad juju on, so as you can see, it's suffering from range drop-off here. 
Uh, but if you had a different loadout to me, maybe a scout even, if you could fit that into your loadout. Uh, like I said, you could have Inferno Whip on and then sort of work out that, that way, but um, you don't have to, you know, take out the snipers at the back. As long as you play the cover the right way, then you're good. Now this room works where once you push up a, above a certain point, the curse brawl will spawn in. They won't spawn in until you do so. Also, snipers will um, hide behind this rock in front of us. They always do it. I like to take those out before we deal with the knights. Everything in routine. That's what we're doing. Once we've done with that, we're going to take down the shields on the knights. We can use our golden gun on one of the knights to take him out quickly. And then we can take out those. These are the snipers that I was talking about earlier. Now we're close enough to deal with them easily. You can farm infinite score on this nightfall. So knights will spawn. What you do is, so the ball that I have now is you can just throw it off the map. Or just not throw it at all and you'll get additional knights like so to spawn in. And you can do this over and over. I wouldn't advise it on a solo. It's not needed at all. Bear in mind as well. Um, I don't know how much score you would gain in like 20 minutes of farming nights. Um, but you'd still have to go and kill the boss and all that stuff. Um, but I don't advise it. Plus it's chasing it. I mean I did kill an extra knight there but that's just because he spawned in. But that, that's full on chasing it. But I mean people are free to do what they, what they wish. But that is a tip for people if they want to do it. As you can see, we're close enough to our super. Again, we've only just used it and we've got it back. Which we can utilise that on future champions which are coming up. It's pretty handy. With this, co with this corridor section, um, you want to take out the two knights first that push. Before you start dealing with any acolytes, t sort of stay covered to the right side. Covers you from the acolytes to then deal with the... Um, Knights, Bl I can blind them of course. That's what makes Wendigo so good in this. You can use things like 21% Delirium as well, especially if you have Hive Armament. You can basically just spray 21% the whole run and it's really good that way. But Wendigo is also good. So we used our um, Golden Gun on one of the Knights since they spawn in pairs. And if you approach them both at the same time, you want to be uh, stunning them as quickly as you can. That's uh, those two champions dealt with. With this area, we'll have four Arc Shielded Knights. You want to try and kill as many as you can of them. I do think the um, Ogre spawns in once you've killed two of the Shielded Knights. Um, so you've got to kill at least one or two of them to get him to spawn in. But make sure when you spawn in that Ogre, you're in a position to stun him without him... Uh, hitting you first. You don't want to be having him spray you down. As we can stun him like that. Fill back up on, on our ammo with heavy. And then when you've done all that, all the ads will uh, back up, retreat to the back of the room, which is fine. You come to the left side, there's a lot of cover here. And you can just take out the remaining knights. We've got our super back. So we'll use it again. One of the knights. Okay, so now we've done that. Done with that, we'll take down the uh, other Archelian Knight. Just keep blinding him. Make short work of them. Now with this room, it's the same as the previous room with the Cursed. So the Thrall will spawn in once you push up past a certain point. But it also requires you to kill all the Arc Shielded Knights. If an Arc Shielded Knight is still alive, the Thrall won't spawn in, but if a champion is still alive, um, the Thrall can still spawn in because the, for whatever reason the game doesn't recognize, because these champions are extra. Because when this Nightfall came out there was no champion, so they're just an adi additional thing.
but definitely don't be skipping all these ads um, since you want you know you want the score for sure just in case you take longer um, at least that way you've still got the score when you were at a 1.8 times multiplier rather than being at the boss at 22 23 minutes killing for all and only getting half as half the score and losing score at the same time so you definitely don't want to be skipping too much this room for example you probably could skip it uh, but of course I haven't got invis and stuff so I'm not going to be doing that just take them out sometimes the knights can en enrage as well and get tanky like that which can be annoying but fine Another thing to note as well, so hybrid purposing, I've got that's another mod I've got on now. Obviously, pr you get your grenade back for every arc, void, or solar shield you take out. However, it also work works on champions. So, their shield, you get your nade back. So, you can actually nade every champion you see once you've uh, broke their shield. So, that's another good thing about that mod. So, this room is probably going to be the hardest for people to solo. It's not that it's hard, but it's the hardest room, I would say, out of it all. If you are on the class that I'm on, I recommend getting rid of this wizard, the wanted target. He's worth like 300 points or something, which is silly, but uh, the reason why I would take it out is because if you don't take out the wizard, of course you're going to be avoiding the wizard, and the wizard takes time to work around all the way of the room, uh, so you have the wizard up forever. So it's just best, you're better off just taking the wizard out, for sure. Now right now, before we um, take out the first Shrieker, we're going to take out the second one in advance. Uh, now the reason being is that we're sort of killing the Shrieker before the second phase, so that when we do get to that next phase, the actually Knights on the right side of the room, the room that we, the part where we just start, they'll spawn instantly. Whereas usually they won't, you have to clear the Shrieker to then spawn the Knights in. But we can, like I say, get rid of that second Shrieker in advance. We did actually kill the first Shrieker, that's, which is my mistake. I don't usually do that, but that was fine. This means the Knights will be uh, hanging around on this side to be aware of. This room here... Especially the middle ogre, you want to be aware of him. If you don't know how to play this room or never played it solo before, you want to be playing to the cover as much as possible. Even though it's only legend, right? It's only 1050, I get it. But this ogre can wreck regardless. We can't overlevel the content anyways. So even though I'm 1070, the game is putting me at 1050 light for power, for damage. I guess you can be a little bit more tanky at a higher light, but you definitely don't do more damage. Uh, but even at the even at, even if you're over level, the the ogre can wreck you pretty quick. You want to be wary of him. We we'll get the um, second knight. The orb rolls down in an awkward place, so we'll get that later. We'll push for that when we've got full health. Don't push for the orb, um, especially when you get exposed if you're low health. Make sure you're full health first. So we had a knight push us from behind, which can happen, which we should have been aware of. So basically, the knights on this side can keep spawning up over and over if you have not thrown two balls. There's four crystals um, to be took down, but if you say you've only took down one of the crystal, the knights will spawn infinitely on this left side as long as you don't throw the second ball. Now I end up throwing it anyways because uh, you know I just want to get through it but you don't have to actually take out any knights on the right side of the room just on the side that we're on now. Like I said the, the knights just keep spawning. They, I think they do stop though once you throw that second ball and they'll only spawn on the uh, right side. This ad pushed us here for some reason so just take him out. Um, and then we've got one last night in front of us. Now there's a lot more sp points to be gained in this room, but the points that you gain, you'd rather have the time save on it. Um, 
So what I prefer to do is obviously take out all the knights, get all the balls, and then as soon as the last crystal is taken down, just super the, the ogre in the middle. <clears throat> but you can, like I say, optimize it more and get more points, but you'd rather... We're going to be able to get 100k anyways within 20 minutes um, at the time that we're on. If you're somebody that's doing the run slower overall, maybe it might be worth optimizing this room and killing all the acolytes before you kill the ogre. You could that, that could be that could be a thing. But just be aware that you don't want the boss fight to take too long. Which I believe on the strategy that I'm doing with this subclass it takes something like seven minutes or so. Something like that. We're just looking for ammo. I'm sure I saw ammo before, which was on the on this side, so we got that. Important as well that you're coming into this next room, especially if you don't have eye armaments, you're coming into this next room with a bit of ammo on you. Of course, if you haven't got hive armaments, I would not be recommending double primary loadout. Maybe something like Ariana's Vow with a kinetic hand cannon or a kinetic pulse, that would work. Uh, but of course, because I've got hive armaments, I can make the double prime reason so bad. So in this room we've got two Arc Shield Knights and two Champions. I want to take down the Arc Shield Knights first. I'm waiting for this um, Knight to get his shield back so we can get a nade off him. Take his shield, get a nade. Point as well that you don't try to fight them all at once as well because they can wreck. Let them. Right now we're farming our super off the champion. We're getting uh, the perk to proc so we can quickly get our super. And we're going to super one of the knights just to quickly take him out. And then we can take out the other knight. Yeah, oh, he's uh, shield. There we go. Let the nade kill him. So then get heavy back. Now, with this boss fight, specifically this first part, if you stand specifically where I am, he won't spawn in ads. He usually spawns in ads. If you're at the bottom end of the map, or anywhere else, he'll spawn in a bunch of acolytes. But if you stand where I am, he won't. Which, this is perfect because you can farm your super back on him. So we just used it literally a couple of seconds ago. But we can literally uh, keep hitting him, precision hits to get our super back. Also, this edges the boss to make sure that we can free phase this fight. Because as we know, with this fight, he, he just goes immune over and over and over. But if we do it specifically in this way, like so, uh, we can get him half out in one phase. That was a combination of farming our super off him, getting the first part of his HP below half or just below that. You don't want to go too low because he will go immune though. But don't go any lower than I did, then you can just uh, goldie him to get him half health straight away. And that just enables us to free phase the fight. If you had a Wardley Coil on, which is an amazing weapon on him, um, but we weren't doing that strat on this run. So I'm, I stood on this side specifically so that we could get the snipers. Uh, sort of spawn, kill them and blind them, like so. Bad Juju works fantastic in this room, just for ag clear. Obviously always getting those reloads. Uh, never having to reload, sorry. But once we've dealt with right side, we can then deal with left side. So this is the same as the yoga room that we just done earlier. Positioning is important. Clear to cover a lot. You know, we're not on a night stalker, so we don't have clutch in viz. We don't have any health regen exotics on or anything like that, so we're just playing to um, cover as much as possible. I usually find uh, right side of this room, so the, the side that I was just on there, safest, the safer side overall. But on the first phase of this fight, the boss doesn't even touch you anyways, he doesn't fire at you. He doesn't do anything. Uh, it's not until the later stages where he starts to attack you. 
and on the final phase that we're not going to even see he actually roams the map while being immune and obviously that modifier is on so it makes him hard work right now what we're doing uh, what I've just done there what I'm about to do now um, throw the ball there and then pop a super immediately and then get some when he goes shots on the boss to then get him below a third it's important that you get him below a third um, just to make sure that on the next phase we can do another golden gun to then finish the fight he stood here as well to blind and spawn kill a wizard now they do have solar shields but you just saw there when he go just took down the shield so match game He's on right now, but it's, bu it's bugged for the wizards basically. It's not working on these solar wizards, so you don't need solar on at all in this nightfall. Of course, we do have solar on, but we're, we're not having it on for the wizards just because we've got it on for special night arc and boss damage, that's all. For this phase, we're just looking to gain our silver back from where uh, for the last phase. Another thing with this particular phase of the fight is that I like to clear all the floor before taking the wizard because the wizard, once you take out the final wizard, that spawns in the night. If you were to take out both wizards straight away um, while having thrall on you, then you've got a wizard, two knights and all the thrall, which is a lot, and the boss can fire at you, so I like to take out the floor first, effectively. We have plenty of heavy ammo, so we're just going to spray it on this uh, knight. This is going to be literally the last ad we kill. We're on 110k nearly, so... You can also farm knights for score here if you just throw the ball off the map. Um, it just keeps spawning out, but yeah, there's no need to do that. You're just going for your 100k pinnacle, that's literally it. We do a ball throw, and uh, pop our golden gun straight away, and then just... Um, finish the boss off. That's a quick way, easy way to get your 100k pinnacle reward this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.